Ladies and gentlemen, Salam Mike back again with another fixture form video. I take your lifts, squat, bench, dead, overhead, what it might be, analyze it, try to coach you up. If you want to get involved, we need three reps at 70%. Email to ask, M I K K E, at gmail.com. Appreciate you guys. And if you like and enjoy these style of videos, please do me a favor, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Now we got some conventional deadlifts. What's up, my man? Okay, besides that little bounce pass at the end, <clears throat> John Stockton in the house. I think this is looking like a really, really clean pull. You have real good patience off the ground. It looks like the back's in a good position. We'll have to see what comes next if we get a side angle. But from what I can tell in the front here, you really get good tension through your arms, back, and hamstrings before you pull. You can notice how the bar doesn't skip. Your hips do not shoot up early. And from what I can tell, on this pull right here, we got an A1 pull. Ladies and gentlemen, leave a comment below if you agree. Moving on to some sumo pulls. Really, really solid. Your general form, I'd say, is really good. That was your best rep right there, to be honest. A couple of them, what's happening is you're rushing a little bit too much. And yes, everybody can have their own routine, and sinking your hips a little bit low before you pull is okay. But typically with the sumo, we want all our motion, we want our knees and hips to start moving at the same time with the barbell. That was a little quick cut there. But get a little bit more tension, fall back, weight falling back a little bit. We got another sumo pull. Not a big fan of touch and goes. If you guys have followed me at all, I did a video on it. Overall, there's the slow-mo. It looks a little bit better here. So like I said, we want our knees and hips and the barbell and our shoulders, everything to start moving at once from the bottom. And that tells me that we have tension in the right areas. We're toit in the right spots, if you know what I'm saying. So um, get that slack out of your arms, heavy hands, tightness in your back. Really solid there. You can see the knees lock out just before the hips, which is okay, as long as they're all moving together. Your hips might be a hair low on that rep. That one's a little bit better. Again, going with a, a more touch and go style, I'm not a big fan. If we can get a full reset, we're going rapid fire through these videos. We're gonna to try to help as many people as we can because we got thousands of emails. Um, overall, all these sumos are good. The inconsistencies in your reps are what I'd worry about most, my man, right here with a backwards hat and the socks. Um, Although some of them are really, really good, some are a little bit misgrooved. And overall, what we're trying to do with reps beyond the volume of, of gaining muscle and gaining strength, the volume in training is a great time. It's just repetitions. It's like shooting 100 free throws. It's like going to the batting cage. It's like going to the driving range for a golfer. The reps are what allow us to practice. And what we want is that stroke, that deadlift form, that setup to be the exact same time and time again. So then when we do come to a new one rep max or we're doing a rep PR or we're doing heavier loads than we imagined we ever did months and years from now, that it, everything will just click and you don't have to think about uh, steps one through five to get through your deadlift. So we gotta really focus in on making them consistent, all look the same and obviously the best form that we can. One thing I understand is, oh, I don't know if it's good form. I can't see it. I can't feel it. This is true, but that's why we kind of work with sub-maximal weights as much as we can, and we can focus on, it's a load that we can focus on and, and feel our bodies a little bit more and at least tell if it's consistent or not. My man here, first I would ditch the heels. I'm not a big fan. I'd probably recommend going with some flat shoes. Um, number two, Hips are probably a hair low. That's why you're getting a little bit too much bending in the back. If you get your hips up a little bit, a little bit flatter back and push your weight backwards, get your body weight behind the bar. A lot of pulls today. Everybody trying to build that big back though. More sumo action. Overall, it's a little rough angle here, guys. If you can get uh, straight from the side or straight from the front in the future, we'll be better off. Overall, that looks really, really solid. You have a pretty small torso or short torso uh, from your hip to your shoulders, which kind of lends in your favor to pull. It, you can get into a better position easier, and it's harder to get into a shit position when you have a really short to torso. Uh, if you have long arms, uh, then you'll automatically kind of be in a good position to pull. Um, right there, continue to push those knees out, and I wouldn't worry about getting your hips too low right there, my man. I'll just worry about falling back and then keep forcing those knees out and flex your quads. One thing you can kind of see on that rep, it looks one, that's not 70% because it's getting a little heavy, but two, you can see as you're squatting down, 
Uh, and what I mean by force those knees out is we want the tension in our hamstrings and glutes and almost teeter-totter with that barbell. If you guys go back a few videos, maybe two weeks ago, I, I tried to give the best example I could on how to do this. There's no tension in your arms or your back or your hamstrings. So when you pull on that bar, you get you pull yourself out of position, you pull yourself forward, your hips shoot up, and then you really struggle to get that last rep. One, maybe the weight's just too heavy to do a triple. Two, if you have tension through your whole system, the point is that we keep the barbell exactly where we want it from start to finish of the lift. Weights are always gonna get heavier. Yes, the closer you get to one rep max, the, the uglier lift may look, but if we can keep the barbell and our body where we want it in space, then most likely 40% will look very similar to 100% besides the bar speed. And that's the goal we're going for. One, because we can build the proper muscles. Two, because we can handle more volume. The more efficient we are in a lift, the more volume can handle. And three, uh, I guess more weight we can lift. And I guess number four, the less likely we are to get injured. That's all the point of this technique are all those factors right there. Overall though, my man, looks really, really solid. Again, I would work on that tension, the teeter-tottering back. Everybody's got them straps on. Not a big deal if you don't plan to compete. Okay, so we talked about in the past a little bit difference in some of the styles of pulling kind of a lower hip and a higher hip. If you have the flexibility to really get those knees out, you can kind of get a real vertical uh, torso like this right here. And then all you really have to do is squat the weight up. Um, and for this individual lady right here, it's really solid. Um, what I would try to do is maybe try to get those shins a hair more vertical and knees more out. You may actually have to move your stance in uh, for yourself to do that. But overall, if this is working for you, I wouldn't switch much besides that. You can see the knees going forward, which I know many people will talk about it being okay. I think optimally, it's not gonna be uh, best for most. So what I'll try to do is move that stance in. I think we have a different angle. If we do, that would be really helpful. It might just be a slow-mo. We do, it's just a slow-mo. So you can see the knees going forward a little bit. Um, and again, yes, you can maybe flex your quads a little bit more, but it's gonna kick that bar path out of the way. On the deadlift, especially sumo, we want a perfectly straight bar path, if not backwards, back into our body just slightly. That's gonna be most optimal. Uh, and because you can get your hips really low and keep your back flat, which is good, um, your nips, knees are traveling forward. So move those knees in, or stance in, and knees way out. And then we'll be able to fire those quads just a little bit better with the proper bar path. I'm getting out of breath. I'm doing cardio over here trying to preach to y'all, uh, trying to get it going. But overall, a uh, really good job for everybody in this video. It's awesome to see everybody continue to improve and that the general, the bottom line of technique and training in general that we see across the board, uh, not only online through these videos you guys are sending me, but on Instagram when I'm swiping around, discovery feed, trying to have some fun, trying to see everybody's improvements, and also in person. You know, I visit a commercial gym here and there, and to see that the general baseline of technique is much higher than it used to be a couple years ago. So props to all of you out there working and spreading, spreading the knowledge. Moving back to some conventional pulls. Oh, don't turn your head, buddy. You're going to break that trap. Uh, I would... Definitely recommend trying to keep your neck straight. Uh, we can get some imbalances and we can get a really, um, you know, potential injuries in our neck and trap. Overall, I'd say again, your hips are just a hair too low and the lockout's just a bit soft. So we want those hips up right there's a little bit better, but you start with them too low, which means I can tell there's no tension in your hamstrings. You're driving your knees forward instead. Again, we're squatting the weight up and we need to be hip hinging the weight up. So hips a bit higher and start forcing them backwards. Again, keep that neck straight. And then at the top of our lockout, both sumo and conventional, think about someone pulling a string from the middle of your head. We want to stand tall and strong, flexing our quads, flexing our glutes, and not overextending backwards. Often when we overextend backwards, our knees will unlock. One, it's just not safe to be holding a large load. <laughs> yeah, I said large load. Uh, while not... Uh, allowing some structural integrity um, of stacking our, our bones basically and two um, bending your knees after you lift the weight is a no lift if you plan to compete moving on to some more conventional next a little bit uh, cocked for me I'll drop that chin just a bit and you're a little bit far away in this video again guys landscape and try to get the best shot you can so I can help you the best I can but overall I'd say pretty dang good pulls my man I dropped that chin a hair and then again with that lockout, you can see the knees go a little bit soft. We just call that a soft lockout. Um, just stand tall, flex your quads, flex your glutes. 
But overall, really, really good. I think we're going to the slow-mo. You can see from the setup, both sumo and conventional for the majority of people, not everybody, for the majority of people, I have them bend over at the waist right there. And then we start to get that tension, uh, pull the slack out of everything. So he leans back a little bit. You can see the arms flex. You flex your lats, flex your back, start to teeter-totter backwards. So there's already tension in our hamstring. There's already tension in our back. And then there's tension going through our arms, thinking about your arms just being chains or ropes, tying yourself to the bar. And then I just start pushing the bar away from me both sumo and conventional it's a little bit easier to imagine sumo once i lock in my midline breathing and bracing flex my lats literally all i'm thinking about doing is flexing my quads pushing the ground away from me and falling backwards sumo or excuse me conventional it's a very similar sensation it's just a little bit harder to feel because you have that tension in your hamstrings you can't just flex your glutes you have to think about almost Leg pressing, you know, this is something Ed Cohn talks about a lot about, and once you start to lock it in and feel it yourself, it helps great. You start to leg press, you start to squat and push the ground away from you as you're pulling with your back, as you're kind of doing a back extension or glute hand raise type movement, and you do those simultaneous with the conventional, um, we get a lot of success. Again, a slight touch and go right there. Uh, I would like to see the bar a little bit more reset in between reps, but for the overall form, um, really, really good. I think your hips are in the down position a little bit too long. Yes, it's called the dead lift because we're going from dead space, but what I'd like to see and what you want to take advantage of is a little bit of the elasticity of your muscles. And once you have the technique down, we don't want to be in that down tensioned position too long. I'd rather have high hips than uh, slam them into place and pull. Overall, actually, that's really, really solid. I guess you're doing a little bit less of a touch and go than I first thought. Appreciate you guys. Be sure to give this a thumbs up. Subscribe. We'll catch you guys in the next one Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. New videos. I'm out.